The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We are going to have as our guest today at 9.30, Hema Reddy, the skinny in the E-mini. And her father was actually one of my students 30 years ago. And she was just a little girl when I met her. Well, she was just, uh, yeah, she's only about 32 now. And so she was just a little kid. And I met, uh, spent the weekend with he with her father and mother in uh, New Jersey. We became pretty good friends. And then he passed away. And she's now trading uh, her own stuff. And so she'll be uh, as our guest at 930. Tomorrow we have Stan the Man Harley. He'll be on with uh, all of his cycle stuff, which is always interesting to see. So we'll be looking forward to that. However, that's Friday. Tomorrow I will be doing the one-day, uh, all-day trading thing that I haven't done in a long time. And frankly, folks, I'm scared to death. I don't know whether to buy or to sell. But hopefully by tomorrow I'll figure it out. I posted the two charts. We look at the DAX. We look at the FTSE. You can see nothing really dramatic happened with them yesterday. We had a big sell-off yesterday at the close. The market hit the exact 61% retracement of those previous moves and then broke down badly and, then, of course, gave, came back strongly today and took it all back. So it's going to be interesting to see how these markets unfold as we move through the end of the week here. Um, I re if you'll recall, folks, I believe Monday is a holiday. So, uh, you know, the last trading day before the holiday is the 22nd. That's usually a positive day, but the markets uh, will be closed on the 25th. On the 26th, we're going to have Storm and Norm Winsky out of uh, Naples, Florida, will be our guest. And um, so we'll be looking to have him on after we have the uh, holiday. The 22nd, Friday, also is a new moon. We need to pay sort of close attention to that for shorter-term swings in, in the market. Okay, I wanted to spend just a second here talking. Oh, I have to show you something, folks. The mascot for the uh, coronavirus has been released today, and I wanted you to be able to see it. You can see here that uh, he washes his hands compulsively. He always wears a mask. And if you take raccoon, rearrange spells Corona. So that's the, the mascot for the Corona virus. Uh, and I hope that is the end of my levity for the day. So we'll see uh, what's going to look out. Those actually, you know, if, if you've ever been <laughs> around a raccoon, they are mean little SOBs. Let me tell you, you don't have anything to do with those. I mean, uh, you know, porcupines protect themselves. You know, being from Indiana, we saw those things all the time. But, boy, those, those things are uh, those are terrible. Oh, my gosh. They're just uh, they're vicious. And you don't want to mess with them. Okay. Um, last night, candle by candle. There was volume up. Uh, I don't know. You're asking, last night was a candle by candle. That was any, I don't know what market you're talking about, Ruby. Can you give me a, a 10 4? I don't know what market that is. Uh, um, oh, the E mini. Yeah, that all the E mini did was go up and down. That's all it did. You know, it followed the, uh, you know, went all the way down. We dropped, what, uh, we dropped 40 handles from the high, and we, we took back uh, a little over uh, 618 of that so far. So there's resistance up there above that uh, 2965 level, but right now that's, you know, just hanging in there pretty good. Now, if you, if you like Fibonacci numbers, and I do, this morning just about um, – an hour ago, we hit a perfect 61% retracement in the gold at 17.57, and we immediately dropped $13, and we, you know, bounced back a little bit from that. But those are the kind of things that you want to be watching when you're looking at short-term trades, folks. The reason why I'm doing the 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 show tomorrow is to support, uh, you know, TFNN, of course, but also to show you that these patterns work on different time frames. You know, I'm going to be looking at 15-minute. I'll look at some five-minute. 
if we're looking for trades to do, patterns to find. And but also you can you can use these on daily patterns. The difference is you have to use a larger a larger risk parameter. Now, I want to spend just a moment here um, on something that uh, Shane Smolian has been talking about for a very long time, and it certainly uh, it, it deserves our attention. This is a uh, this is from Bloomberg, but it's basically what it's doing is it's showing what's happened with the Federal Reserve. You can see back in 08 when we had the crisis, how everything, the pre-crisis was, what, $900 billion, and now we're setting at $7 trillion. Folks, that is a lot of money, <laughs> $7 trillion. I mean, I oh, my goodness. Anyway, you can see what happened in 2011 when they brought in quantitative easing. That was helicopter Ben. And now we've got uh, rocket ship uh, Jerome as our, our leader here. How they're going to go up or not, I don't know. All I know is, folks, I, I follow the patterns, and that's all I follow. I try not to you know, think too much about it. You know, that's probably a bad thing, I guess. But for me, it works because I don't understand the stuff that, you know, they tell us about all these things that they're doing. I, if the prices are going up, there's buyers. If prices are going down, there's sellers. That's basically it. And, uh, I, you know, I try to do that. That's uh, keep one, like Curly says in City Slickers, uh, just one. Just do one thing and try to do it well. And that one thing is to try to find the patterns where I don't have to risk very much. And that's really what I what I try to do. And, and it works okay for me. And it works okay for you if you practice it a little bit. So uh, David's posted a really cool quote here from uh, Jesse Livermore. The successful trader might fight these two deep-seated instincts. He must reverse what you might call his natural impulses. Instead of hoping, he must fear. Instead of fearing, he must hope. He must fear his loss may develop into a much bigger loss and hope that his profit will become a much bigger profit. That's true. And that's how Tom, the trader, tries to do it as he tries to go after the big wins. So, Yesterday, uh, you're talking. About, we're talking about the Gartleys that they had yesterday in the XLF. Yes, they had two ABCDs up. I did see that. So just remember, folks, these patterns, uh, they work part of the time, but also they do fail. And that's what you have to protect yourself is against yourself. Because if you're failing, you do not want to stand in front of that freight train. That can be a very, very expensive um, the proposition. Uh, we had a question this morning about the Bitcoin. I wanted to bring this up here because, folks, this is not a bearish pattern that we're looking at uh, in the Bitcoin. It certainly looks like it wants to uh, break out of this level. We talked about that 382, which was about uh, uh, eight or nine days ago, right there at 8100. And we've g gained all of us back. We're almost back above 10,000. Any move above 10,500 is going to put about a Fifteen or sixteen thousand dollar handle on this, so play uh, pay attention to that as we as we look at some of these because it can be really uh, really really cool when you're watching some of these things uh, through these uh, different uh, time frames that we're watching here. Okay, now I wanted to uh, spend just a uh, just a second of time here uh, about the corn market because the corn market has been uh, trying to make a bottom and then it started to back off and the, part of the reason is the the China Chinese corn, they 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 charted over there, and the sales of corn in China have really, really dropped badly, and the demand is just not there, and the supply is really, really heavy, and that's why this market is under so much pressure. It's got the double sword of supply and demand against it. Now, there will be a bottom someday, but we don't know. Now, we've had a little bit of a bounce like we thought we were going to have with bad news, so that's a good sign, but uh, frankly, let's just wait a little bit. We're going to take a break here, 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Larry Pesavento is hosting a special event Thursday, May 21st from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Trade What You See, a live trading event. For the first time in over 10 years, Larry will host a live event where you'll watch over his shoulder as he trades the markets live. You'll see how he organizes his trading day, the times most likely to generate a signal, what outside information he ignores, and more importantly, what he does not ignore, and much more. Larry will trade the markets in real time, including the Euro US dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, the Dow, and E-mini S&P, crude oil, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans and more when you sign up you get a month of his daily newsletter fibonacci 24 7 included for all the details on larry pizzavento's live trading event on thursday may 21st and to sign up today visit the front page of tfnn.com call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 We're back, folks, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the U.S. dollar index because it affects the Treasury bonds. And as you can see here, we've had a big move here in the last couple of days from 150 down to 99.22. Uh, we're now breaking out of the euro uh, of this move here right now. So this is telling the euro is strengthening versus the U.S. dollar. This may mean that people that have been buying Treasury bonds are saying, hey, look, uh, if these things go to negative interest, rates, you know, how are we going to react? And today, for the first time in history, the U.S., uh, excuse me, the Treasury bonds over in, they're not Treasury bonds, they're uh, a, a chancellor, of the, chancellor of the Exchequer bonds over in the U.K. went to negative interest rates. And that means that you had to pay them for holding your money. Folks, there is no dumber thing you can do in all of investing than to do that. I mean, stop and think about that. You're paying someone to take care of your money, and they're not giving you any guarantee that uh, you're going to get it back. I mean, this is not a good thing, you know. That's it's <laughs> that's not very very good. Uh, someone's posted in here that the corn prices in China have held four percent in the last couple of weeks, and part of that is because you know these these animals. Uh, uh, I don't know if they're having the same part of packing stuff, but they, they don't do much beef there, folks. Most of the beef in China comes from Australia. Uh, the British pound, you betcha. I'm watching that very, very closely, Bob, because we are at a very major, major spot here in this British pound. 
Uh, you can see here that we had a, a very nice sell in this, and uh, we have a break-even stop in it uh, now. But uh, we're we're looking at this uh, 123.30 level. If we can get above that, that's got a chance to do pretty good. Now, this is a perfect example, folks, of the ABCD pattern. Uh, hold it. We might have someone calling in. We have Dave from Michigan. Dave, how are you? Very well. How are you doing, Larry? Well, I imagine. Still above ground, living the dream. How's everything up there with your <laughs> governor? Is he still? Is she still shut everything down? Uh, just a complete whack job. But um, you know, it's. Yeah, I'm they not all really are. from this area, but I know the people around here aren't really down with what she's doing. But. <laughs> what can I help you with, my friend? Well, I want to mix it up a little bit. Um, oats. On a fundamental level, you know, I, I can see why the demand for oats could, you know, could really kind of fire things up under this commodity. Um, you know, if you're looking at the, you know, the long, much longer term charts, it, it, it mm -hmm. seems like, you know, this thing could charge for new highs. Yes. So I just thought it'd be fun to take a look at it. Oh, Dave, you've got the old cowboy off his saddle. Let me tell you, I haven't seen an oat chart in 35 years. I really haven't. I, I didn't even know they still that, traded yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you want to take a look at it one day and then share it with us. I, you know what I'll do is I will have my good friend Rich Anderson do the chart for me. I'll have 20 men do one, and then on the show on Friday, I will feature oats. I have a great oat story, though, back in the old uh, days of the of the, the uh, Russian grain robbery in, in uh, 1972-73. There was a, uh, a fellow in Los Angeles that had a brokerage firm there. Um, and uh, he he was on W W K H Y at was it W H Y I can't even remember what it was. It's where the original C N B C was in uh, Los Angeles, and he he was on about oh, twelve o'clock, and then Gene Morgan came on at one o'clock uh, with a show called Charting the Market. Well, anyway, Maury was on, and he was telling about the explosive move they were having in oats, and the the reason he gave was that there was a big demand for thoroughbred horses, uh, and and this was right after you know such secretariat had won the triple crown <laughs> and he was saying it was because of uh, thoroughbred horses and i mean the number of the number of times this, the 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 hor horses would move because of oats would be one in a million but i never yeah. did forget that everybody laughed about it and he took a lot of he took a lot of flack because it was rather funny but uh he made up an excuse for fundamentalists, and that's what it is. But, you know, usually I can make up a story, but by golly, with oats, I don't have anything. But I will look at those. Uh, is this, I don't even know what the symbol is anymore. Do you, do you know what the symbol is on oats? Zio. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, G starts with a no. That's a really tough one. I should remember that one. Hey, I will have the answer for you. You know what? Oh, I've got a guest here today, so I can't do that. But if we finish with HEMA early, I will try to have that oat chart up there, and maybe you could uh, listen in. And if you don't, just drop me an email, and I'll I'll get the information for you and send it out because I I okay. literally I literally haven't seen it. But where, what part of Michigan yeah, are no, you I up there with I the flood chart? I didn't think you would. I was just just uh, kind of throwing you a curveball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I. I, I missed it. I struck out. Hey, are you up by the floods up there in Michigan, or where are you? Uh, I'm, I'm, we're southwest, so just off the lake. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Very, you're okay then. That's good. Corner. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Listen, thank you for yeah, calling we're, in. We're I appreciate a, lot, it. a lot of fruit, a lot of stone fruit, cherries. Uh, you know, it's it's, it's good stuff. Corn. Oh, I love the ch cherries. Those Bing cherries are my favorite fruit of all. Okay, thanks for calling in, partner, and I will get that answer for you. Uh, if not today, it'll be on the Friday. Yeah, Friday's good. We'll talk to you then. Yeah. Bye. Okay, you bet. I'm not even sure. Mr. Z, there you go. Oh, look, Mr. Z's got the answer right now. Let's see if we can get this up here. I can't post it, but uh, thanks, Z, for bringing that up. But I will take a look at it. It is... Uh, I see I got the ZO spot. Okay, I will be able to do that without any trouble because I have all the data. But golly, I haven't uh, orange juice. Uh, I haven't traded that. Uh, boy, I think I did one cocoa or something like that. I just don't do those anymore. And uh, but oats used to trade pretty good. In fact, the rough rice used to trade pretty good. So uh, you know, it, all of them used to be great. But you know, now with all the stuff that's going on, uh, with what's going on in the world, who knows? But we'll see. Okay, um, okay. Uh, we got a it says the oat future in the United States does trade on its own. 
Midwestern Canadian prairie supply demand, large production in, in Europe, Scandinavia, Poland, Russian, and physical oats are out there, trade differently from the U.S. So that's probably why I don't trade oats, because I'm looking for the ones with the big open interest, and those are the ones that I'm really trying to uh, look at. Give me a second here to... Uh, Double check what the markets are doing here this morning, and we'll see uh, if we've got up here. Uh, we're having a little bit. Uh, the, 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 I really, folks, this is my two cents worth, and you know, if you pay more than that, you're overpaying. But let's let's just bring up the S and P here, so you can see it real quickly here. What I'm watching here, and whether it'll help or not, I don't know. But we're going to bring it up here and watch it. Here is the uh, S and P. And if we can get it right there, I think this will do it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I think we're going to have a hard time closing above 2960. And I'll be really surprised if we do. And I'm surprised a lot. You'll see there's an ABCD right up there at that 2960 again. And if we do get above it and close above it, that would be pretty substantial. But frankly, I, I still believe that we are uh, making some type of a, this is actually nothing more than a one day rally after the big move down. You see the, the big bottom that we had here on the 19th. And then, boom, you can see away we went. This was a sell-off that we had yesterday uh, right in there. You can see we dropped from 29.60 all the way down to 29.10. We dropped 50 handles, stopped exactly, just almost exactly at the 382 level, and now we've rallied back into this level. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed Developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I think we have Hema Reddy on the line. Hema, are you there? Yes, I am, Larry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Just like you were sitting right next to me here in the <laughs> desert. I know it's a little different than Buffalo, but uh, listen, why don't you go ahead and start? I've got your first chart up, which is the VIX index, and then just tell me when to change, and I'll move to the next chart. So just go ahead okay. and show us what you're looking at. Great. So what I've got here with the VIX is I noticed this yesterday and actually put out an update on it that all those little X's you see there are based on my market timing tools, where I forecasted highs and lows from my own perspective. And I, you can see they're pretty helpful for the past few weeks. And this 29.52 is a pretty key, I guess, support on the VIX. And so I'm kind of on the same boat as you. You were just talking about how on the S&P, you don't really see us getting above, I think it was you know 29.60, right? Yes. So in that same vein, on the VIX, I don't see it really getting much below where we we are now and maybe turning higher. But, um, you know, I want to let the chart tell me, right, following your advice, trade what you see, <laughs> not what you believe. <laughs> so yeah. I'm watching that 2952 for, for the broad market to see are we able to get at least two days close below it if we are, maybe S&P sees new highs. But if we're not, then I think there's a you know a chance for another round of weakness short term. So that's why I had that there. So you could go to okay. the next chart now if you'd like. All right. This is the E-mini S&P 500? Yeah. So this is just the E-mini daily. And I have a lot more markings on my chart, a lot like yours. But just to give any of your listeners perspective who maybe don't watch this market close, you can see it's been grinding higher since late March. And all of this has still been contained in that bar by that big arrow. That's March 3rd range. So I look at the entire range of a reversal bar, especially the midpoint. And that provides really useful support and resistance on top of uh, GAN methods and other traditional technicals. And then at the bottom of the chart is the way I use the RSI, called the RSI power zones. And uh, these settings show the RSI divided up into many more zones than the typical overbought oversold. So those two blue, uh, green zones are where in a bull market you should kind of trade between. But you can see that it's not been able to gain momentum traction. It's just, like you said earlier in the, in the show today, just meandering. It's a little bit more insightful on the intraday chart, so you can flip to that one next. Okay. Okay. So now do you have the ES60 minute up? Uh, yeah, 60 minute. Yep, that's what we've got. All right. So you can see at the top, I captured this chart about an hour ago when I was publishing. You know, my skinny on the mini is um, my take on the ES futures, and I also cover the NASDAQ mini, which I have on the next charts. But here on the ES, so it's interesting. You had said 2960 completely independently, right? And while your methods are obviously among the earliest I learned from my dad and the fact that you met me when I was like, I don't know, 10 years old or something. Um, it's interesting how I was just listening to you say that 10 minutes ago, and I also see 29.59.63, 29.58.50 very specifically as pretty important resistance. So if we're able to get hourly closes, so at the top of the hour, you know, 10 a.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern, if we're able to get closes on the hour above those levels, then I think we grind a little more higher, probably to that purple trend line I have above, which is approximately at the 3,000 level. Mm -hmm. And if we're not able to get above this 2959, 58 area, then uh, we chop back lower. And you know, in my reports, I kind of put the stepping stones for if we violate a certain support, where we might head next. So I'm curious what your take is when you see my 60-minute chart like this. 
It's very good. Yeah, you do see the same thing I do, and just do it a little bit differently. But I, I agree with it. You know, it's a mother God and country stuff. It either stops here, <laughs> or it's right. going to go a lot higher. That's pretty much the bottom right. line. Right. And yeah. so that's pretty important area to watch. Um, sure. So if you want to go to the Nasdaq, I can give a little take oh, there. Oh boy, this is the wild one, the Nasdaq. Yep. So. so the Nasdaq, with all of its, you know giant, you know, king tech stocks behind it, obviously has been a stronger than the E-mini. And the one thing that is still not exciting to me is that if you look down at the momentum on that daily chart, it's still between those two upper red lines. It's just not able to really push out in a way to me that gives confidence that all the uncertainty, you know, with the pandemic and the economic effects and everything else, and like you said, all the government spending and the Fed activity, it's all like a house of cards that I feel any one little thing that goes amiss could bring this all down again and we get another wave. Now, I'm not going to trade that or recommend anyone trade that unless it happens, but I am just kind of mentally prepared for that. So mm -hmm. when you look at that NASDAQ chart, there's a horizontal line above. That's the low of the whole February 20th range. I think it's a very important resistance. So it's kind of in that 9,500 area. And mm -hmm. then um, I dial down, you know, on the 16 minute chart, which is next. Okay. You want to, uh, that was the 120. So you want to go to the. Uh, oh, no. Was it's the, the 120. Sorry. You're right. So I'm so okay. used to saying 60 minute uh, because I use the okay. 60 minute for the ES. For the NASDAQ, okay. I use the 120 minute because, like you said, it's such a wild thing. I actually think it's easier to see the patterns when you double mm -hmm. it. So instead of 60 minute, 120. Uh, so you're right, you're good there. So here this morning on the 120 minute chart in the NASDAQ, if you look back all the way to the left, you see this green rising trend line. And I use trend lines a lot differently than I was taught for the CMT exam. <laughs> like I do things now that if I sat at the exam and did them, I'd probably fail because you know <laughs> they don't follow the book. <laughs> and so they teach you, Resistance trend lines need to be falling, right? And support trend lines need to be rising, and you can't switch it around. Well, that to me is very impractical. I actually see mm -hmm. these kinds of trend lines help a lot. And they probably tie in too in your patterns, you know, your, your different patterns that you have with your Fibonacci ratios, same idea. So here we've just been grinding into that upper um, uh, rising green trend line. It's still a stronger market than the ES. So I think it's more on track to get to that 9432 and then maybe edge up to 9546. But everybody's probably just waiting for, you know, FOMC minutes and other data and, you know, just they're waiting for more clarity, I assume. I mean, mm -hmm. I am. <laughs> so okay. uh, probably just kind of see a little bit more sideways there, but tilting the upside. So my, my traders who day trade the NASDAQ, a lot of them day trade it on the 15 minute chart. I tell them, you know, follow what the 120 minutes doing, but use the 15 minute to maybe get a clue if that energy is starting to fade. You know, trade with the trend by using the bigger time frame, but you can find your setups on the smaller one. We have a question about these uh, numbers that you have on the far right, They're showing yes. lows and highs. You want to explain what those numbers are in that uh, yep. fuchsia color? That that's very interesting. Sure. So I every time I publish, so I do the ES at least three times a week and the NASDAQ at least two times a week, you know, in the morning into the open, I pull my own support and resistance. These are not like automatically generated lines. I'm determining these with my eyeballs every day and doing calculations using GAN numbers and other patterns to come up with these. So the report will have the full detail of the explanation for the horizontal pink line for support or the horizontal blue line for resistance. But to make it easy to see so that traders can like transpose these lines on their chart, I also put them on here. Say, so stay with us. We have to pay a few bills and then you can tell the folks how they can reach you. And sure. uh, we'll uh, see if you have any special offers or anything. Hema ready? Skinny in the mini. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648.
Larry Pesavento is hosting a special event Thursday, May 21st from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Trade what you see, a live trading event. For the first time in over 10 years, Larry will host a live event where you'll watch over his shoulder as he trades the markets live. You'll see how he organizes his trading day, the times most likely to generate a signal, what outside information he ignores, and more importantly, what he does not ignore, and much more. Larry will trade the markets in real time, including the Euro US dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, the Dow, and E mini SP, crude oil, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, and more. When you sign up, you get a month of his daily newsletter, Fibonacci 24 7 included. For all the details on Larry Pesavento's live trading event on Thursday, May 21st, and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, we're back with uh, Hema Reddy, Skinny of the Mini. Can you tell the folks how they can reach you? Do you have any special offers for us? Any free things like vegetables, fresh meat? <laughs> Well, I think better better than that, I've got free market updates, just like what I walked through. So if you go to the next slide, you can see it just says hemaready.com forward slash Larry. And that will just bring them into my Hema Ready tribe, as I call it. So I just share free updates a few times a week, like the skinny dip you just saw. And mm -hmm. I do a chart of the week, like I did the VIX yesterday. I share about resources that help me in my trading, you know, books, blogs, all kinds of stuff. And then from there, if folks uh, get to see what I put out and like it more and want to dive into any of my products or services, they're welcome to just uh, kind of stay in the family and hear about my offers or email support at hemoready.com if they want something specific, you know, like the Skinny and the Mini or my RSI course, anything like that. Okay, great. Well, listen, thanks for joining us today, and we're going to have you on again. Just let me know when you'd like to come back, maybe sometime in the end of June. We'll have you back on. That sounds great, Rat Larry. Hope you stay okay. well and safe, you and uh, take care, everyone. Thank you, Hema. I appreciate it, honey. We'll see you later. Be safe yep. up there. I will. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, you bet. Hema ready, folks, out of Buffalo, New York. All right, let's move on here. We broached, we've uh, popped out of that uh, 2960 level in the S&P. We've got all the way up to 2962.75, trading at 2960. Uh, we just made a new high, a recovery high in the uh, crude oil contract. I see that has finally uh, popped to the upside. And I'll be looking for a sell in crude oil earlier today. 
And uh, we're going to see how that uh, works out. You've got to give it a little bit of time to see if it's going to hold those numbers that we're looking at. Now, remember, folks, on the gold, we made the 61% retracement last night up there at 1757 and a half. We came all the way down, dropped 13 bucks, 1744, rallied back eight, back to 1753. And uh, it still has a little bit bullish bias. The thing about the gold, folks, is you got to pay attention to it because we're starting to see open interest increase in the gold market. And the GLD uh, is uh, not the GDX. The gold miner stocks are still doing pretty well. So I'm going to have to be uh, uh, looking. I don't have any of your charts on those. And I, I tried to find an oat chart. And <laughs> believe it or not, I can't find it. I, I must have a different symbol with CQG. But I'll have to double check to see if that's going to be the case. One of the things I'll be doing tomorrow on the live is I'm going to be trading at Microsoft, Microsoft and also Apple. They're the two largest. And so I'll be day trading trading those, you know, looking at the patterns and things uh, that we're following. Now, on this move that we just had in the S&P, we did get up to 62.75. What I do now is when it hits those levels, you know, you don't have to try to pick up, a, you know, catch a falling knife. What you want to do is to wait and see if that's a good breakout or, in fact, it's just a, you know, a few stops coming in early in the morning. So you want to watch that closely because that's a way the market is telling you it's information that the market is giving you and that's what you really want to be watching here because uh, back in the old days when you were down on the floor of the exchange you could see the runners coming in but now you don't have that so you've got to be because you don't pay any commission anymore you used to pay 40 or 50 bucks even more now you pay four dollars but because you don't have that you know we're you're you're tied with all the other traders out there folks so they're doing the same thing you are so you have to use some type of advantage and that advantage is common sense so you know pay uh, close attention attention to it. You see, we've uh, popped up. Our high has been uh, 62.75. We're now back to that same level, 259.59. Now, that tells me that that 22.60 or that 29.62.75 must be pretty important. So I'm going to wait here. I'm looking at a 15-minute chart. Let's just I think I can bring this up here to let you folks see it again. We'll see where we are. And oh, I know what I have to do. I have to drop it into a file first, and then I'll give it give it out to you. So just give me one second, and we'll get this little puppy up here, so you'll be able to see it without too much trouble. Hopefully, here it is. And uh, there we go. And you'll be able to see it, and then you'll see what I'm watching here. Okay, hold on. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I'm not going to worry about that oats. I got I got more I got more fish to fry than that oats. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Dave from uh, Michigan. He caught me by surprise on that on that one, but we'll uh, we'll definitely get his uh, answer for him eventually. I'll wait till I get the information from Rich or <clears throat> Twentyman, and then we'll be able to uh, take a quick look at it. All right. One other question someone is asking, and that is uh, about the. Uh, uh, situation in the hog market, folks. I believe you know we the these folks that are doing the cutting out of the hogs. You know the butchers, the the uh, slaughterhouses and stuff, meet the meat the packing places. They're under a great deal of trouble, and uh, they're having their best time is to try to find some of these things to uh, uh, you know get people in there. The, the people that are working there have been under great stress, and you notice here we have the I'm going to put the hog chart up here. Because uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, put that. Uh, you see, it's made a 382 retracement. And for these hogs can stay above 57, that could be a very, very bullish sign because it's taken two weeks to make a 382 retracement here in the hogs. And that means it's going to be uh, something that is uh, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty exciting. I hope I don't lose my voice because I have a whole day tomorrow and I don't want to have a bad voice when I have to do a full day. So hopefully we'll be able to get that corrected uh, tomorrow. All right. Now, um, see, <laughs> we made a, everybody has to be uh, talking about oats today, I guess. All right, let's take another one that looks kind of making some type of a bottom in here, folks, and that is sugar the sweet. To get this up here, uh, we're now trading in around the 1060 level uh, in the sugar, so it's held that double bottom. You see we went down there for just a moment, taking out all the stops from 2018, and we pot, jumped back above it. But the other thing is watch those ABCD patterns.
patterns on the upside, how powerful they were to tell you that you were in a top topping motion, and that's a, a main thing to look at. The uh, I'm not I'm not screaming at the computer, Jerry uh, uh, Jay. I don't don't think that I am, but maybe I am. You know, one of the problems that I have, and I have lots of them, is I've been I've been deaf in my left ear since I was four years old. I had really bad ear infections during the war, and we did not have antibiotics. And if we did, we couldn't afford it. So I basically lost my hearing in my left ear, and uh, so I I was totally I've been totally deaf since the age of five. It kept me out of Vietnam, which I guess it saved my life. My other two cousins went in, and they were both uh, never made it through. So I guess I should be helpful, uh, thankful. Okay, let's. Uh, someone else asked me about the coffee market. I don't trade coffee too much, but let's get the chart up here so you can take a look at it. It's. Uh, You'll see here that this has held those levels where the 135 pattern come in. We did have a little bit of a rally, so that's holding relatively well. Yes, she, uh, Hema has a very nice website. Uh, she's a very smart girl. She went to Indiana University, believe it or not. And I think when I think she was about five years old when I met her. I don't know how old she is now. That would probably tell. She was just a little tiny little girl. She was all dressed up. Her mother had her in a beautiful little dress and stuff, and they had a lovely home there in New Jersey, and it was uh, fun to meet him. I spent a lot of time with uh, her dad. He was a physician and uh, this is a very good trader too. Okay, let's move on here to the next question uh, that we want to watch here. Let's take a quick look at how these markets are reacting. See, now now you see the S&P is, it's already told you that it wants to go a little bit higher. So now we're trading in the, the 29 uh, 63 level. So there's no reason to think that this is going to stop here. So be very careful. Wait till it gets back a blow 29.59 and then you have a chance to put your stop in. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to 
to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're making new highs now in the crude oil. It's only rallied from uh, $6.75 a barrel all the way up to $33. If you looked at the other one, it's gone over. We went to minus 37, which was, you know, a very rare event, but you have to count it because somebody got stuck down there. So it's rallied $70 in the in the uh, May contract that has already expi expired, but we rallied uh, $28 a barrel, uh, $25 a barrel in the uh, in the July contract. So that's a pretty big. I'm watching the August, which is selling at a little bit of a different uh, background here. The key level that I'm watching here is at 33.35. We're trading at 33.36 right now. And I want to see how it holds around that level, just like I was watching with the S&P, you know, to see whether it was going to pop up. Now, if you were doing the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones went just the opposite. As the S&P was rallying, the Dow Jones went down. So you've got to do each one separately, folks. That's the that's the bay, you know the main thing to pay attention to. But our trade of the day today would have been to sell the gold at that uh, 51 percent retracement, 61 percent retracement, and we had a very nice move down to uh, drop back 13. And now we've rallied back, and we've made a. Uh, we made a 78% uh, retracement in the in the gold on the way back up there at 17.54. We're trading at 17.53, folks. This gold has got a chance if it can if it can close above 17.60 today. Uh, this I think we're going to see. Uh, see new highs in this and you know like they say there's no one is bullish as a sold out bear and uh, we'll see if that's the case but uh, it's been pretty good to us so we want to pay close attention to it of course so we're now just touching that 1755 again but uh, if we clear that 1757 we could be looking at a pretty big move here uh, in the gold market so it's still you know quite early and uh, I would watch that uh, with a great deal of anticipation here because that 1758 level is very, very important on a 61% basis here. Uh, regarding the bonds, we're very oversold in the bonds, so we should have a little bit of a rally here coming on.